Hey friends, I hope you are looking forward to a DIY video. So I am starting off with a Kirkland's um, piece of art. It was, um, I believe originally $15 and then 50% off. And so basically $7.50 for us. I like the frame, I didn't like the image. It is sometimes hard to find good frames around here, but this one had a lot of detail. So I'm starting off by ripping off the back paper and then I am going to remove the cardboard and the original image that's in it. There are all kinds of ways that these fasten into the photos. In this case, these just have like little staples that you just need to bend back. You can often do this with a pair of scissors or what I'm doing now, a small screwdriver. Then you can use the screwdriver to just sort of pry out the cardboard and the image I like to leave the glass in because otherwise I tend to break the glass either getting it out because you don't quite get around all those staples or putting it back in because let's face it, you can't bend glass. I've been picking up these great canvas art pieces and selling them on our Whatnot show on Thursdays and I decided I am going to use one of these canvases that didn't sell and put it in this frame and show just how fabulous this piece is. And it's great because you do not have to use the entire canvas. And that's one of the things that I love. I can find the frames that work for me and then I can go ahead and use the parts that fit into it. I do not have to use the entire photo. So I am just simply using tape to tape the image down all the way around and then I'm going to insert it back into the frame. I'll leave a link for our canvases in our store and whatnot um, in the descriptions below and you can see sometimes it is not easy working around the staples and getting the pieces in and there is some give in the cardboard which is why I try never to take out the glass. I've done that a few times and really regretted it. And now I'm ready to paint my frame with DIY paint in the color Gravel Road. And I'm showing you that I did not have my lid properly sealed and the paint dried up a bit. But one of the great things about DIY paint is that you can easily reconstitute it with water and just mix it up. So now that I've got it reconstituted and my paint has a good thickness, I am using the Perfectionist brush by DIY paint. I'll leave links in the description below where you can pick those up. And I am pouncing into the, I'm going to say the very deep um, patterns that are along this. The perfectionist being a more of a French tip or a pointed sash is great to get into all those nooks and crevices that I really love about this frame. As with most paints, it is recommended that you do two coats. And so I went ahead and did that. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I actually have a second pointed sash brush. Um, this one I am going to use to wax the piece. So I'm using DIY paint, clear wax, and I'm giving it a nice wax. Now what you're seeing here is the DIY paint dries really light. It's a clay-based paint, and so it dries light and pastel color no matter what one you use. And then when you add in your top coat, or your wax, then it will turn into a nice dark color. And you can see here, and then after I have done clear wax on the entire frame, I'm gonna go in with some antiquing wax, the um, brown wax. And I'm gonna rub that around the edges and um, just create a little bit of depth and texture. And because I very much like primitive, I'm gonna add just a little bit of dark and decrepit dust right around the corners and right in those cracks. And that will give it an authentic aged look. This is sort of like getting that grungy dust on a brand new painted piece and it will definitely take it up a notch if you like the old world look. And so again, I like the little bit of rustic look. So I'm taking a putty knife and just along the edges, I am putting some scratches in the surface. I'm just taking it down a little. Now you could sand, you could wet distress. There's a bunch of different ways that you could distress this. I wanted these to be very small and really just almost like scratches, like I said. So I want to go down to the gold underneath, um, but I do not want this to be a heavy distress piece. And I found that the... Um, 
the putty knife was the perfect way to get the distressing that I was looking for. And I wanted to just give you a little show around. Again, these are almost sort of gouges in the paint as opposed to sanding areas. Sanding would have taken off too much, and for me, wet distressing probably would have also. Now, some of you might have been concerned about having the glass in there and painting, but the great thing is, again, DIY paint until it is sealed and cured, it still will reconstitute with water. So in this case, I'm gonna use some glass cleaner and a razor blade, and I am just going to scrape. If you want it done even faster, you can um, just let the spray sit there for a minute or so, and the glass will be so easy to clean up, you'll wonder why you ever took the glass off or taped it up to begin with. So when I painted, I added this tape back here to hold the glass in place so that it didn't fall back while I was painting the front and cleaning the glass. So now I'm just removing that paint, or excuse me, that tape that was holding the glass in place, and I'm gonna go ahead and put the cardboard and the piece of art back. Now I chose not to do it here, but if you want this to look professional the way it was before, you can use postal paper and then postal um, tape to tape the back back on it, um, working around the D-rings, and you'll have a great professional look at the end. For me, I didn't find this necessary for this specific piece. And here's a peek, now let's find the full reveal for this image. I think for a $10 canvas in this piece of art, this was a major makeover. It looks a lot more sophisticated and much more modern than the old Kirkland's printed. So if you figure that the $7 frame and the $6 print and a little bit of paint, this is a great makeover for less than $20. So we're basically gonna do the same thing again. This is another thrifted piece of art, but this one actually, I believe has a mat in it and that makes a little bit of a difference. So we're gonna see if once we cut this open, if we can actually use the mat or if it is um, sort of one built-in piece. Just like before, we're gonna cut into it and then bend back the staples, and there is our mat. So that's exactly what I was hoping for. Let's just go ahead and get that out of the frame. And again, leave the glass in there. You see how hard it can be to get these pieces out sometimes. You do not wanna damage that glass. So we will go ahead and pull the mat out and let's get that picture in there. So let's go ahead and test and see exactly how we want this image lined up in the frame. So again, I'm just using one of these inexpensive canvases that we sell on our Whatnot DIY nights um, and in our marketplace. And I am going to tack it down with some tape to decide exactly how I want this to go into the frame. So I've put it back in the frame to go ahead and see, make sure that's how I want it. And I'm gonna go ahead and start painting up the frame. There is a little bit of a bubble in there and I don't think that I filmed it, but I did go ahead and use some tacky spray. And when I take the picture back out, I'll spray tacky spray on the cardboard that it's on and then just use my hand to make sure that all the bubbles come out and that the art is properly placed in there without any bumps or wrinkles. To paint the frame, I am using the color um, Aviary by DIY Paint. Again, it is a clay-based paint. The nice thing is you don't have any smells. It's not stinky. It's all easy to work with. Again, it's super easy to clean off the um, glass and all of that, so it's the perfect paint to do these projects. I'm gonna go ahead and give this two coats, and this time I'm using a Klingon brush, which we also sell at vintagebedesign.com. I will leave links in the description below. And that is also a nice flat brush to kind of work with the banding that is on this frame. So one of the things I did want to point out is when you're doing your second coat or usually any coat after your first coat, um, the paint, because it is clay based again, may have a little bit of a drag or a pull. And to overcome that, just use a misting bottle and lightly mist your piece and that will make the second coat go on much more smoothly and you'll lose that sort of drag feeling. Whenever you feel that, it means that there's, it's just really dry for your paint. So adding a little moisture corrects all of that. And just like on the other frame, I'm gonna go ahead and use one of my perfectionist brushes 
to apply a nice coat of clear wax and it's going to drastically change the color of my piece and we often call this the freak out factor around here people get a little concerned when it dries because it's too light and then when it's waxed it's too dark but i promise you it will dry somewhere in the middle that is the perfect color that's exactly what we show it as and exactly what you were looking for and using my finger i went around the rope edge of this um, piece with some gilding wax links will be in the description below and then with the same perfectionist brush that i waxed earlier i am just adding a light little bit of gilding wax on in sort of a very streaky form around the outside of the frame it does make a subtle but dramatic difference in bringing this a lot of depth and texture Please be sure to let me know what you think about these quick thrift store art makeovers. I think they make a big difference in your decor for such a small change. So don't be afraid and overlook those. And here's a quick reminder that you can follow us on all social media at Vintage Bee Design. And we have a community in Facebook called Creating the Hive or Creative Con Vintage Bee. And I have just started this month a new coaching group. Membership is only $20 a month. There's lots of discounts. Links in the description below. Let's get back to crafting. And so this project actually started on a Facebook Live. And I'm going to show you the opening here so you can see what the box looked like beforehand. And I'll leave a link in the description so if you want to watch how we got to this point, you can. And I thought that... Um, on this wet day, I would make over a little jewelry box. So I have some supplies. We're gonna be using DIY paint in the color White Swan. We'll be using one of DIY paint brushes. And then we are going to use the, if I can get it over here. We are gonna be using the French Blue Transfer by Redesign with Prima. We're also gonna put on some, I don't know if we'll get around to it tonight, but or today, but we're going to put on some of these cute little feet. Now, all of these supplies are available on our website at vintagebedesign.com, except for the little feet, and these will be available on our whatnot, our DIY whatnot show tomorrow. And so, now that I have painted the box with DIY paint, I am, and I have added my transfers, I'm going to go ahead and work inside the box. I am going to be using my perfectionist brush again, which has the nice pointed tip, which gets into those corners really nicely. I'm going to give this two full coats. Once that has dried completely, I'm going to go ahead and take measurements for the inside of the bottom of the box, and that will let me know what size to cut my um, decoupage paper to. In this case, I'm going to be using some napkins as decoupage paper. There are lots of different ways that you could do this, but in this case, I'm gonna use a paper cutter. Now I've already separated the plies so that I just have the top ply. Um, I've done lots of videos on decoupage, so if you need to know how to do that, you might wanna check out a different decoupage video. I'll leave a link in the description. But I, um, and by the way, this is a little harder to cut than actual paper, just because of the way the fiber is made. Um, plus I probably realistically need a new blade on my paper cutter. Once I have it cut out, I just wanna do a quick test run in the box to be sure that it properly fits. D uh, tissue paper is really hard to move around um, and it tears very easily. So you wanna be sure you get this right the first time. And so of course I thought I was recording the entire time when I was adding the decoupage down, but I did not. Um, I don't know how I missed that, but I screwed it up. So really what I'm doing here is I'm doing the top over the decoupage paper, but you would have wanted to do this exact same thing, but under it as well, which I did. This is after that is fully dried, then you can go and put a coat over the top. Do not put the coat over the top until the coat on the bottom is completely dry. Now I love these cute little feet for literally and figuratively elevating the look of your jewelry box. It not only raises it a little bit in height, but it also makes it look way cooler. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some of these to my whatnot by now. We do a DIY night every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. 
where we sell cool, fun things like this, as well as ephemera and stencils and all kinds of other DIY stuff. And um, just lots of cool stuff that I'm able to find and purchase in small quantities, and we run them through there. So these do have little nails or screws that you can use, but I find E6000 to be a much better choice when adding these feet. I think in the long run, they actually will be stronger than using the nails or the screws that come with the kit. Now you can certainly still use those as backup, but in my opinion, E6000 is the way to go for these. Now, once you've added them, you just wanna let this dry overnight and just leave it alone until then. Use a napkin to wipe off any excess. A damp napkin also works really well, um, but don't touch these or do anything until they are completely dry. Now, I was also able to pick up these really cool corner brackets. And um, again, uh, uh, we have these things regularly on our Thursday nights for whatnot sales. And I'm gonna use, again, some E6000 and attach these to the top corner. We also have tons of great um, locks and, um, and hinges and little pulls and all kinds of stuff that are great for upcycling jewelry boxes or other little cigar boxes, things like that. So I'm just gonna get these on all four corners and then I will nail them in place. This is my cool solution for tiny nails. I actually did a TikTok many, many moons ago on this and it went semi-viral, but using a bobby pin allows you to get the nail in place without it hurting your fingers. It manages those tiny nails when you have little chubby fingers like I do. Now I did leave one transfer from this set to put on the top of the inside of the jewelry box because I like to have little special things inside the box when I'm doing it. And so this is still part of the French blue set. Um, and so I'm just gonna put it on the way you put on every other transfer, which is to rub it until it is down as you're lifting. If it pulls up at all, you just lay it back down and, and rub some more until you can work the entire sheet of plastic off and it will be well stuck to the piece you're working on. When you're done, you wanna be sure that it's fully stuck on. So just take that plastic and give it a rub and make sure there's no bubbles or loose edges and then you'll be all set to go. So here's where we are on this box now. When everything is completely dry, I give it all a light sanding with 220 grit sandpaper and that'll make it soft again. And this little box is all finished up. I love how the accents really make this box look special. Now, I thought I had filmed um, putting that lace around the edge of the inside of the box, but somehow I missed filming that as well. I'm really gonna have to work on my DIY filming. I don't know what happened, but still, I think that this blue and white is perfectly French looking, and it is gonna be a nice gift for somebody for Mother's Day, perhaps. We'll have this available in Sunday's